Hey there, welcome to this Q&A video. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, composing photographs and setting up your, your photographs so you can get better pictures. I'll also talk about a few of the, the uh, standard rules of photo composition. If you've done any searching on the internet, you'll see things talking about the golden ratio and the rule of thirds. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those um, ironclad rules that you always must follow except when you don't need to follow them. So without any further ado, let's talk about composing better photos. Battalion 2, engines 11, 27, 7, and 22, investigator 1, ladder 27, and safety 1, house fire, 601 Maple Street, Army, Echo, Battalion 2, engines 11, 27. Okay, so let's talk about composing your photographs, whether, again, it's for display or just for social media. Let's start with the obvious. Do I need to follow all these rules of photo composition? Good news is, the answer is no, you don't need to. Photography is an individual thing, and whatever you like and is pleasing to your eye is probably how you should be composing your photographs. With that said, there are some general rules of composition that have existed since the beginning of photography, and they can add something to your photographs. So what are these rules of composition? Well, again, a quick internet search and you'll turn up a dozen different variations on the five basic, ten basic, a hundred basic rules of photo composition. But essentially, when you're taking photos, think about some of the things I mentioned in my earlier video. To begin with, fill the frame. It's important that your subject is clearly discernible and we know what you're talking about in the frame. If your goal is to photograph a fire truck or a fire scene, let's make sure we can see the fire truck or the fire scene. Consider balance and symmetry. Again, with man-made objects, that's fairly easy to do. So if you're taking pictures of fire trucks or fire stations, that comes into play fairly easily. But think about that in your photograph. Consider framing your subject. Again, this is pretty easy when we're doing fire stations, but even when you're photographing firefighters or people, think about what surrounds them and what, what the eye is drawn to. And that brings you to the next common rule of composition, and that is consider the leading lines. Think about a parking lot and where those lines lead. So um, your eye is naturally going to follow those lines. So if you have those lines available to you in your photograph, consider using them and having them draw the subject or draw the viewer's attention to the subject. Look for layers. Good photographs often have multiple layers, typically a foreground, sort of the subject, the, the main area, and then a background. And try and ensure that all three of those elements are there and are in balance. This will add some depth to your photographs. Sometimes we don't want background, so consider the background. Um, make sure it's not distracting. Typically with portrait photography, we don't want a lot in the background. Um, and so there's a lot if you get into portrait photography where we blur backgrounds or we use lenses and equipment that naturally blurs the background so it doesn't distract. But in other cases, you may want the background there. So again, remember just when you're getting ready to take that picture, look at the entire picture. Is there anything in the background you don't want? Is there you know, anything distracting? Is it not balanced? Um, and those are the sort of the basic rules of composition that can make your photos a little bit better. Well, those are all good rules, but I never heard you mention the rule of thirds. Ah, the rule of thirds. Typically the first and foremost rule of photo composition. To use the rule of thirds, what you're essentially doing is drawing a little tic-tac-toe board, if you will, on your photograph. 
Then, instead of centering your subject in the middle of your photograph, you would want to center or line up your subject on one of those grid lines, if you will. Doing this will make your photograph more interesting or create some tension or pull in your image. But wait, there's more. A lot of photographers recommend using the golden ratio over the rule of thirds. And the golden ratio essentially allows you to create a grid based on a Fibonacci sequence of numbers. And in fact, those numbers can create the Fibonacci curve. There are lots of examples where people have used the Fibonacci sequence and spiral to highlight great works of art. Um, Leonardo da Vinci has several examples where the spiral is used. Using the spiral to help compose your images or designs is supposed to enhance the overall beauty and impact of the image or design. But using the rule of thirds or the golden ratio can be really helpful and really uh, make a difference in your photographs, especially when photographing people. Consider giving someone who is looking out of frame something to look at or look towards that can add balance to your image as opposed to just centering up that person in the middle of the shot. For those of you who've been paying attention and taking notes on these rules, you start to notice that some of them almost seem to conflict. I talked about balance and symmetry, and then I talk about rule of thirds where we move things outside or away from the center of the image to create an image that may seem out of balance. The point is you don't have to follow all of these rules every time you take any photograph. However, if those elements are present or you can use those elements to enhance your photograph, you should try to do it. Again, what we're trying to do is create an image where there's balance and symmetry, where the subject is clearly visible and the viewer's eye is naturally drawn to the subject you're trying to tell the story about. I'd like to finish up with a few more practical and less esoteric tips, if you will, uh, especially when it comes to photographing fire trucks and fire scenes and personnel that might be on those scenes. I've mentioned the importance of filling the frame, but consider how you're going to display your images. Most cameras are taking images that are a two by three ratio. And if you're posting landscape images two by three on Instagram or other social media, they tend to look small uh, and a little awkward. So I like to leave a little buffer in them when I'm taking pictures so I can crop those images down to a square or a, uh, at least a more rectangular image that appears better on Instagram. I often use a four by five ratio. Instagram is actually designed for a four by five ratio in the portrait mode, which is great for people, but not always perfect for photographing fire trucks. So when you take those pictures, leave that room and that'll allow you to crop it to something that's a little more useful. If you're taking pictures of people, try and stay away from the headshot, right? We're not taking mug shots, so we don't want passport or driver's license photos. Um, this is a, a great example of when you want enough background in to help you tell the story about what's going on. I like to get the entire person into the frame, head to toe and include some foreground or background that is relevant and helps display the subject in a accurate and interesting way. If it's just a single person, this is the ideal time to remember the golden ratio or the rule of thirds can help you and create an even better photograph. 
Okay, so that wraps up this video. Hopefully you have found it interesting, helpful, entertaining. Um, if you have any questions or comments, again, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If I made any mistakes or I left anything out, please mention that also. Um, otherwise, I'd ask you to like and subscribe, and we'll just see you in the next Q&A video. Bye.